Sports. We are platform. We are Arizona. Welcome to Sunday Baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. We're the Chandler Double A Diamondbacks. Today is the Diamondbacks take on the Padres. Go Diamondbacks! It's a Sunday afternoon in Arizona. We're back at Chase Field. Today it's the D-backs and the San Diego Padres as our homestand continues. The D-backs today nice and comfortable inside and going for a three-game sweep. It's Chase Anderson on the mound versus former D-back A.C. and Kennedy. Sunday baseball is presented by Sanderson Ford, the Diamondbacks, a chance to sweep here on Fox Sports Arizona. Good afternoon from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthium, Luis Gonzalez along the way. D-backs a chance to sweep the Padres here in this three-game series to open up this homestand all week long. We're at Chase Field. And Gonzo, it's another chance here to see some of these young Diamondback players develop. And I think we've seen over the course of this weekend some real progress with rookie Jake Lamb. Really has. Jake Lamb made adjustments. You've seen it from the first game to yesterday's game and hope it continues tonight on Sunday. So here you see him early in the ball game, getting a ball inside, getting jammed a little bit, not getting his hands out. Frustrating for a young player when that happens, but still gets the RBI. That worked out okay. Absolutely. On Saturday night, he's looking for better pitches, gets a fastball out over the outer half of the plate and able to deposit it into the right center seats. And then this is a learning curve. It's a process. Uh, we've seen Jake uh, Jake chase some pitches. Maybe he should lay off before. But this sequence here late in the ball glam, uh, game last night shows some improvement. Yeah, missed a fastball down the middle. Got another one he missed, and that one was up. Another pitch away. Those are pitches that he was swinging at earlier. One inside, too close to take. Ready to get one out over the plate and stroked it in the right field. What, is, what does all that show you right there about where Jake Lamb is right now? I think the maturity. He's getting more at-bats at the plate. He's starting to feel comfortable. He's had a couple multi-hit games. So now he's starting to feel good at the plate. Hopefully it carries over. Chasing the sweep. It's Chase Anderson versus Ian Kennedy. First pitch coming up on Fox Sports Arizona.
Coors Field. Diamondbacks with a chance to sweep the San Diego Padres. But before first pitch, we pause to honor America with the voice of Chase Field, Mr. Chuck Drago. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and please remove your hats. Please direct your attention to the field as we honor the United States of America and pay tribute to our veterans, active duty, and retired men and women of our armed services. The Arizona Diamondbacks and the San Diego Padres invite you to join in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner, performed by Jessica Kelly Arnold and signed by Michelle Brown on behalf of Disability Awareness Day. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the flag was still there. Say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Or the land of the free and the with you Padres and Diamondbacks San Diego today trying to get win number 600 for their manager Bud Black and avoid the sweep at the hands of the Diamondbacks on the mound for Arizona your Arizona Ford starting pitcher Chase Anderson the rookie right-hander his last start Tuesday at Nationals Park he lasted only two innings and a possible innings limit on the radar screen for pitching coach Mike Herkey we have a lot of young pitchers who are kind of running into some uncharted territory as far as uh, innings pitched and uh, pitching in September. So we're kind of just trying to use common sense is the biggest thing. We're not going to really put numbers on anything right now. Uh, we're going to go by what we see, and then we're going to make evaluations based on that. 
Well, Gonzo, there were some things that we saw to be concerned about in Chase's last time out Tuesday in D.C. Only two innings, six runs on six hits. He walked three. It was a rough day. Yeah, it really was. I think for him, you know, the thing when you have young pitchers that aren't used to pitching this late into the season, now when we get into September, especially with all the rookies that we have, we go into uncharted waters for them. Well, and here is Salarte, who's had a good series, bangs that one into center for a base hit to lead off the ball game. Salarte hit the two-run single in the eighth inning to tie the game up last night. Here's the lineup for Bud Black's Padres. Salarte, Liriano out there and right again. Seth Smith back in the starting lineup. Bronzal, the catcher, will play first. Rivera back behind the plate. Cameron Maybun has been a thorn in the D-back side all year long, is in center. The former Rocky, Chris Nelson, back at third. Alexi Amarista all behind Ian Kennedy. As Bud Black today goes for his 600th career win as a manager, all with the Padres. He trails only Bruce Bochy on San Diego's all-time list. Here's rookie Reimer Liriano. Liriano without a hit in his start last night. He was hit by a pitch and scored a run in that eighth inning when the Padres came back and tied the ball game. I'll tell you, the day, today the Diamondbacks are looking to sweep the series, so it's been something they haven't done in a while. The fly ball along the right field line. Mark Trumbo gives it a look, but it's in the seats. And the D-backs trying to win three straight for the first time since the third week of July against the Cubs. They have won five in the last six versus San Diego. Liriano just made his debut with San Diego last Monday, not quite two weeks ago. Just turned 23 in June. This is well hit. A base hit into left field. Two clean singles off Chase Anderson to open up the ball game. This is what it looked like last week in D.C. Well, he's leaving a lot of balls up in the strike zone, especially to this aggressive team, the San Diego Padres. See that ball right down the center part of the plate. Chase is not a guy who will light up radar guns. He usually works at most 92 93. So far, it's been about 90 91. We'll check the velocity, which is always a sign of arm fatigue. The dangerous, dangerous Seth Smith steps in. He had an 0 for 4 Friday night and had last night off. He has been their best and most consistent hitter all year. You see the OPS that is sixth best in the National League. Yeah, he's always been a good player, especially off the bench. He's an athlete, played football. Ole Miss. Or that school up north, as they say in Starkville. That one gets right off the glove of Miguel Montero, and the runners move up. Definitely not a good start for Chase Anderson and for the Diamondbacks here. We'll try and get this worked out here. The concern about Chase Anderson's workload is that he pitched 39 innings with Double A Mobile to begin this season, 87 in the big league. So right now he's at 126 for the year. Now he threw 88 innings at Triple A Reno last season. So Chase begins today having already thrown 38 innings more than he did all of last year. It's a lot. Yeah, it really is. And I'm not so sure he didn't cross Miguel Montero. Miggy kind of ducked his head as that pitch was coming in. Goes out to the mound trying to get the right communication together with Chase Anderson. And now he's got two runners in scoring position with nobody out and a 2 0 count on Seth Smith. So you're looking at. The 38 innings more than he threw last year for Chase, coupled with his ineffectiveness in his previous start. And that sorts to set off some alarm bells that maybe he's getting near an innings cap. There's the strike three and one. Yeah, we haven't even gotten into September yet. So, and so I think it's one of the reasons why Kirk Gibson said yesterday they will in all likelihood go to a six-man rotation. I think we'll see Randall Delgado get some starts. And Delgado will be okay. He's been... Shouldered the workload and been in the bullpen a little bit. Drops a breaking ball in there for a strike, and the count is full. 
You see a nice breaking ball in the inner half of the plate. Towards second, the shift is on. Gregorius will settle for one. Salarte scores, and it's one nothing San Diego. Take a look at the Diamondbacks defensively behind their rookie right-hander. Essentially the same lineup we've seen throughout the weekend. Marte in Cigarte Peralta left to right of the outfield. Jake Lamb back at third. Didi Gregorius at shortstop. Aaron Hill back for the first time in this series. Mark Trumbull at first and Miguel Montero. Catching Chase Anderson. Didi has been sensational. A highlight film here in this series. So a run in for the Padres. Liriano's at third with one out for Yasmani Grandal. First pitch swing and drives it to right center field. Inciarte got to go a long way and he tracks it down. What a catch by Ember Inciarte. Liriano scores. It's an RBI for Grandal, but wow, did he cover a lot of ground to get to that ball. Boy, what a fantastic play. He had a beat on it as soon as it was hit. Stayed up in the air long enough for Inciarte to run under it. I'll tell you, that ball was hit well. And all thought he had it. Inciarte takes a quick peek, sliding, nice sliding play there. So two singles to open up the ball game against Chase Anderson. Both runners come in and score. Bases empty, no outs for the catcher, Rene Rivera. He smacks one into center right at Ender this time, and that's the inning. We are just underway at Chase Field. Chase Anderson trails 2-0. One run on Friday, scored uh, two runs yesterday. I've got two in the first here against Chase Anderson. And now for the Padres, it's your Arizona Ford starting pitcher Ian Kennedy, the former D back. In fact, three times an opening day starter in Sedona Red. Today, back here at Chase Field, his 27th start of the year with San Diego. Here's his former catcher, Miguel Montero. I expect him to work ahead in the count. I expect him to, you know, change speed. Uh, obviously, if he's secondary staff, he commands it ahead in the count. He's going to be a tough threat, you know. Uh, Ian, he's a guy that then he knows how to pitch. Nine and eleven in his first full season with the Padres after his trade there at the deadline last year, a three-seven-two ERA. This is his second start this year against his former team. D-backs beat Kennedy at Petco Park back in the first week of May when he gave up three runs on 11 hits and only five innings. And more importantly, right now for Ian, he's pitching with a two-run lead before the Diamondbacks even got up to the plate. And there's that comfort factor there. There's no question about that. We talked about what a difference that made for Josh Colmenter in the series opener when the Diamondbacks scored three in the bottom of the first. 
Ender and Ciarte, 261 and three homers. A pair of hits in the series, both last night. Ender singled, doubled, and scored a run. Ian happy to be home sleeping in his own bed now. <laughs> although he's on the other team. And a lot of time out here the first two days of this series chatting with his former teammates took something off there in Ciarte. Is down one and two. A 25 and 13 record career in this ballpark. A place with which he is certainly very familiar. And he strikes out in Ciarte to open up the ball game one away. The lineup for Kirk Gibson's Diamondbacks today. Pretty familiar with uh, what we've seen all weekend long in Ciarte. Aaron Hill back in there, his first start in the series. Peralta trouble at first. Montero catching Marte in left. The big series. We've seen some progress. Gonzo talked about that at the top of the show with Jake Lamb and Didi Gregorius back in there at shortstop. Here is Aaron Hill. In Kennedy throwing strikes so far. 241 and 10 homers for Aaron. And he knocks that the other way in the right. And a one out single for Aaron Hill. Defensively, the Padres look like this behind Ian Kennedy. Got Chris Nelson back at third, the former Rocky. Amaris to add short with Everett Cabrera on the DL. Solarte moves from third in the first game of the series to second in the second two games. Grandal, who catches a lot for them, is at first. Rivera behind the plate. Smith, Maven, and Liriano left to right. And there is Chris Nelson getting a second start in this series, both at third base. This is an injured Padre team. Without Yonder Alonso, without Everett Cabrera, and without Carlos Quentin, all on the DL. And they have since, of course, traded Chase Headley to the Yankees in Kristen Orphea to Seattle. Peralta, 285, seven homers. If you really think about it, both these teams is a who's who out there. If you're a veteran guy coming to see a ball game, you don't recognize a lot of these names out there. Both teams trying to figure out who's going to be part of things for next year. When Ian Kennedy was here, Gonzo, what did you like about him? I, I liked his aggressive style. He's not afraid to pitch in on certain guys. A lot of times that got him in trouble hitting certain players and things like that. But, you know, his, his demeanor out on the mound, he's a gamer. He's going to go out there and give you everything he's got. And that's why his record was so good pitching here at Chase Field. Ian Kennedy, three opening day starts. He is fourth on the D-backs career wins list behind only Johnson, Webb, and Schilling. Fourth in game started in D-backs history. Fourth in strikeouts and fifth in innings pitched. You knew he wasn't intimidated when he came here from the New York Yankees to the Diamondbacks because you pitch in the big stage over there. You have enough media attention and things like that, so... When we got a guy like that, you feel pretty comfortable at having him out there. And he's pitched for the most part pretty well for the Padres this year. They had an anemic offense the entire first half of the season. Bud Black's team offensively has been much better since the All-Star break. But the first three months, it was really, really hard to score even one or two runs a game. Everyone on the team, it seemed, had a batting average that was on the interstate. And the end one loss record reflects that to some degree. Peralta chases that one. Second strikeout for Kennedy. Two down. Changeup. Great job there of taking a little bit of something off of him. You see that ball dipping down and away from Peralta. Wasn't able to recognize it quick enough. Once you start that swing, it's pretty hard to, to stop it. Got some good movement on that pitch as well. Great downward action. Down and away to lefty. Makes it a tough pitch to hit. Mark Trumbo now. 233, eight home runs. A triple in last night's game. And he wanted it 
it down and away, got it up, but Trumbo got under it. Reimer Lariano. And Kennedy Strand, the one-out single, through one, he leads it 2-0. Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Jack in the Box. If the D-backs hit a home run today, score a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow with the purchase of a large drink. Back home in the great state of Arizona. Some work to do with Chase Field for Chase Anderson. A pair of Padre singles to open up the ball game. Salarte and Liriano both scored on productive outs for the San Diego hitters RBIs for Smith and Grandal and it's 2 nothing as Cameron Maben leads off the second. Swing and a miss so in one Maben a pair of singles last night he scored a run he has been an issue for the D backs this year. He's at 249 for the season. Let's hope Chase Anderson comes out this inning with better stuff he left a lot of balls over the middle of the plate in the first inning. Another one right there and it gets through Didi Gregorius at shortstop a hard hit ball right to short. And got on Didi in a hurry Nathan's aboard. Padres come out swinging today their previous three games they scored four runs on only ten hits. Today they have already scored two runs on two hits. And make it three now that is ruled a single for Maven to lead off the inning. He's hit right on the button. And he's aboard for the former Rocky. Chris Nelson. Chase Anderson always looking to get ahead in the count if he can. He's been in the strike zone. All day long so far 15 pitches 11 strikes. And he says if you execute pitches and get ahead you can kind of get anybody out from there. That's the name of the game. To maybe throwing some pitches up there that are a little too hittable. When he's behind in the count, Chase says, well, then you have to make pitches that are susceptible to getting hit, and then bad things happen. Oh, and two. Well, that was still a pretty good pitch to hit. Too, so you got to be a little concerned with those balls he's leaving right over the center part of the plate right now. With him, it is always fastball command. That's how he succeeds, and that allows him to then mix in his favorite pitch, that changeup, and the curveball. Well, he's got to have that fastball command early. Everything starts from there. Bring him up and sit him down for a strikeout for Chase Anderson. Gabe Morales says strike three behind the plate. Nice job by Chase Anderson. Miguel Montero sets up on the outer half of the plate and he hit right on the target. 
shortstop number five. He can live there all afternoon, right? Absolutely. If he's going to give it to him, see there on the Fox tracks, just a little bit off the plate, but close enough where Miguel Montero was sitting. Alexi Amarista. I watch Maben with good speed at first. Three strike ones in the inning for Chase, so he's been ahead in the count throughout the second here. Amarista 235. And Chase has had a very encouraging season. He's shown a lot of promise. He's shown he can pitch in the big leagues. But uh, trying to get past a rough day in that last star Tuesday in Washington. Only two innings, six runs, six hits, and three walks. And considering he was very good in his six starts previous to that, 2 0 with a 2 1 9 ERA. To flop in such a fashion Tuesday was a little bit of a red flag given his timeline this year in the innings we talked about. Perhaps an indication that he's tiring, but to, then again, we worried about the same thing with Josh Colmenter after he was flat his previous start, and we saw what Josh did here to the Padres on Friday. 0 oh 2 now. Nice job on that breaking ball down and in. Miguel Montero almost took one on the back of the head here on the backswing. Maven had wandered off the bag at first. Seems to me like Chase Anderson is going to have to go to that curveball just a little bit more today. They're getting on that fastball. Got it right there and knocked it into right field. A base hit for Amarista. Alexi Amarista, a pair of hits Friday night. He scored the Padres' only run in that game, and he's got a single in the second, two on, one out for Ian Kennedy. Here's a breaking ball, left it up in the zone a little bit. The only part here that hurts is a 0 2 pitch where the guy gets for a base hit between first and second. Four hits now for the Padres, all singles. And now conference time in terms of how to work to the pitcher. Alexi Amarista down there listed at 5 6 150. Quite a contrast to Mark Trumbo 6 4 235. Looks like quite a mismatch out there. <laughs> My money's on Trumbo. Corners in on the grass for the Diamondbacks. Kennedy squares but fouls it off 0 1. Take a peek around Trumbo here because there's no way he's going to be able to see anything there. Good luck with that. Jake Lamb at third and Mark Trumbo at first, both in on the grass. Lamb kind of kitty cornered there at third. Trumbo four or five steps in. Play on at second. And Maven is back in time. Says the Cowboy down there, the crew chief Joe West, has second base today. See the spin move. That's a, a play there that they run when the shortstop breaks towards second base. Timing play. Kennedy squares and bunts it foul again. Now it's 0 and 2. Yeah, struck out 23 times in 41 at bats. Look down to Glenn Hoffman at third. He's got Maven at second, Amarista at first. They just had only three sack bunts all season. Squares again with two strikes, and this time gets it down. Lamb has one play. Runners advance, two outs. Five four on the put out. Maven goes to third. Amarista now at second. He squared around early. He just kind of pokes at it. And that's one part of the game that a lot of pitchers spring training they. It's one of the things that they make them do. They don't really like doing it. And sometimes when you get deeper in the season when you're playing in these playoff games you realize how important they are. Got to get productive outs. So here's John Hervey Solarte who's had a tremendous series singled and scored his first tie off today. Had the two run single in the eighth inning that tied it last night. 
a pair of hits from the leadoff spot on Friday. Missed up and away. Salarte acquired from the Yankees in the deal for Chase Headley, July 22nd. There's a strike one and one. Yeah, it just seems like these first couple innings, he's kind of doesn't really have a good feel for anything up there. He's throwing he's throwing a couple good curveballs and he's throwing some lazy curveballs that left over the plate. Yeah, the one they threw to Amarista for the base hit. And he is ahead 0 and 2. This one is hit in the air to right field. Peralta has room. And that's the inning. A close call, but Chase Anderson strands two. Padres lead at 2 0. Central League. You're linked to what's next Montero, Marte, and Lamb in the Arizona second. No, I actually got lost on the way home, and my mom called me, and I declined it right away. And so she she got mad and asked if I was biggling in her. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm lost. I need to find my way back home. So did she called, and you were just driving around? Yeah, I was, I was looking at my phone for directions, and I declined it right away, and she wasn't too happy with that. That's our Geico quote of the game from Jake Lamb, who's due up third this inning. All part of being a rookie. Jake said he is staying in a new place with a friend, so maybe there's a bit of an excuse there, guys. But, uh, yeah, gets lost coming out of downtown Phoenix. But I'm glad he smoothed everything over with Mom. You know, she thought he might be big leaguing her, but he definitely was not. Just trying to get home. Well, you hit your first big league home run. You got to feel the phone call from Mom. That's just part of the deal. And if you're going to be late, you might as well be late when you're leaving the ballpark <laughs> and not getting to the ballpark. We're going to have to check him out and see if he's got navigation in that car. Well, I think you can get him hooked up with that, can't you? I, need, we'll, I think we'll you know a guy, do. don't you? <laughs> I don't have the connections Brenly does, but we'll try to see what we can do. Nobody does. 3-0 to Montero leads off the second. 261-13 home runs. Miggy has had a very good series on base three times in each of the first two games. A single and a pair of walks last night. Green one now. Friday, a couple of hits, including his 13th home run. And I like this gig up in the booth. We get a little cold stone ice cream. Sunday's big. Innings. Sunday's big, yeah. Gonzo. You guys are living the life up here. They're really good to us. A late off walk. Montero on base again. 
When the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. The day after every D-backs win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code D-backs50 at PapaJohns.com. Alfredo Marte, another start in left field. He has started all three games in this series out there. Marte walked and scored a run last night. First pitch swing and high fly ball, shallow right field. Liriano coming in. And that's the first down in the second. Now batting, third baseman, Jake Lamb. Jake Lamb, a couple of hits last night, including his first major league homer. Yeah, it's got to feel good for the youngster right there. Got a pitch over the outer half part of the plate. Got extended. Got a lot of love when he got in the dugout. Of the silent treatment, and then later on, sooner or later, they'd come around to him. And then got lost on the drive home. 217, his third start in this series. He singled, scored a run, and had an RBI on Friday night. Wanted to come inside, but Kennedy had that one leak out over the plate. And I think a lot of teams are. Going for that inside on him to get his weakness. They see that he can hit that ball out over the middle of the plate. Now you said before, if you come inside on him with his swing and his stance, that makes it a little harder for it's him. It's a little tougher for him to get his hands out, but he's one of those guys. If he gets his arms extended, that ball can go a long way. Just inside that time, it's one and one. See, most teams, a guy like Jake. They like pitching him hard in and then they'll throw him something soft away get him leaning out once again and come back inside with that hard fastball. Everything's inside. And the only one that leaked out over the plate was the only one he has swung at so I, I take it that's a pretty good sign. It really is he's starting to get a little better in pitch pitch selection. He has always had throughout his minor league career a very patient approach. That's, that's all the scouting reports say. Works deep into counts. Is that in the air to left? Seth Smith. And he just missed that pitch. That ball ran kind of out over the middle of the plate. Just didn't stay on top of it, got under it a little bit. Here's a pitch of Jake Lamb kind of running away from him. He wanted to come back inside. And you got two pitches out over the plate, and those were the ones he swung at. So I think that's what we're talking about when you talked at the top of the show about progress, right? Yeah, it really is. It's a good sign to see him. Starting to come around and get better on pitch selection, you know, and he's getting more ABs. He's playing every day now. How much does that help? It helps a lot, for, especially for a young kid. He's going to get a good test here later on in the week because let's see if he's in the lineup against a guy like Clayton Kershaw because it's a lefty lefty situation. If you're going to be an everyday guy, you're going to have to face those tough left handed pitchers. Kershaw is pitching Wednesday against another tough lefty, Wade Miley. Off day tomorrow. Trevor Cahill and Roberto Hernandez Tuesday, first of a two game set with the Dodgers here at Chase Field, and Miley Kershaw on Wednesday night. And I'm excited for that series because that's a great matchup for a lot of our youngsters out there. Yeah, that's a, take advantage of this opportunity to let them get their, their feet wet, throw them right into the deep end of the pool. Well, not only that, the Dodgers are playing to try to win that division against the Giants. They're battling back and forth. They're staying in the middle of the race. So they're coming full guns ablaze trying to come in here and win those games. And now the D-backs have to try to take those games away from them. Dodgers home right now against the Mets, trailing 2-1 in the second. And the Giants are trailing at Washington, 8-6 in the seventh inning. DD 213 now six homers after that big three run home run in the eighth inning last night. Snapped a 2 2 tie. And he yanks 
this one down the right field line. We'll see how fast Montero can run. He's coming into third, and he will stop there. D.D. Gregorius picks up where he left off last night. That's his fourth double. Well, that's a good sign for D.D. starting to come around, show signs of life once again. This game is amazing how one good swing last night can turn a guy around. There you see the swing. Nice compact swing, gets the barrel of the bat out. Smokes that ball down the right field line. When he turns on a pitch and pulls it into right, he's got some pop in that bat. And a chance here to see if we can Gonzo get Chase Anderson to at least sneak one through the infield here. Second and third, two outs. And that was the first hard hit ball given up by Ian Kennedy today for the D-backs. Chase one hit in 27 at bats this year. Ian Kennedy coming off a loss in his previous start. That was last Tuesday at Dodger Stadium. Rene Rivera will go out to have a chat. Kennedy gave up six runs on seven hits, lasted only five innings. He was struggling at the end of June. At that point, he was five and nine on the year. The ERA was over four, but well, then Ian went unbeaten in July. Three and zero oh in five starts, and he's had mixed results here in August. One and two now. Kennedy has not gone deeper than six innings in any of his previous four starts this month. And he's at 30 pitches here, 18 for strikes. Well, and he missed his pitch right there. Rivera had set up over the outer part of the plate, and that ball was right down the middle, and Chase just fouled it straight back. And he's off there, and it's even two balls and two strikes. Andre's outfielders will come in trying to cut down Gregorius at home in case Anderson does sneak one through that infield. But he strikes out and the Diamondbacks strand two through two they trail it two nothing. Our Sanderson Ford Arrows Fox Sports Arizona Kidcaster winner. Welcome. 
Hello. This is the part where you talk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How's it going so far? Uh, good. Been an awesome experience. What's been What's been the best part? What have you done? Uh, interviewing Aaron Hill. He's a tough interview. He doesn't say a lot. Yeah. Well. What'd you get out of him? Anything we can use? Um, that. I guess his favorite player when he was a kid was Craig Biggio. He played second base. Mm -hmm. And um, that's and then he. That's pretty much it. No, yeah, well, Aaron Hill grew up in Visalia, California, and he plays a lot like Craig Biggio, I think. How about you get to meet Gonzo up here? I, I'm sorry, Bob Brenly's not here today, <laughs> but uh, we we did the best we could for you. We got Gonzo. Oh yeah. Right, came in special just for you. Now, do you play ball? Uh, yes. What, what position do you play? Catcher. Oh, you're a catcher. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Miggy's one of your favorite players? Yep. So you like to watch him play? Yeah, all the time. How about Tuffy? You know yeah, he he's he's really good, too, but Miggy's my He's favorite. your guy, huh? Yeah. All right. What do you like about Miggy in particular? Um, The way he did, the way he plays is amazing. And then, like, I always try to do what he does during the games. I always try to practice what he try what he does, and. Well, what do you see specifically, Brandon, that you you try to work on that Miggy does? Um. Because you might have picked up something we haven't noticed. That happens all the time. Uh, I try to, I try to practice um, like the, when the ball like hits the ground, right tries to bounce. Yes. Blocking balls. Getting hit in the yeah. face. I bet your parents love that. Yep. <laughs> Now, you know he's a big talker in the locker room, and he's always goofing around with guys. Are you one of those guys on the team? Yeah. You're energetic and you yeah. positive energy around your other players? Yeah. You try to do that? You're the guy that keeps him loose in the clubhouse, huh? Yeah. Yes. Well, how, do you get to a lot of D-backs games? How many games do you get the chance to come out to? Um, Six or seven every year. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Terrific. And this is the defensive overshift now for Seth Smith. Do you guys do this with your team, the, the shifts? Is uh, that even allowed? It is uh, sometimes. Like, we won't shift as much as they do, but. Well. Now, now, you're the catcher. You're supposed to tell guys what to do, right? Yeah. Are you good at that? Yeah, you're very loud. So, <laughs> it works. Okay, Brennan, let me ask you a question. You're hitting right now. You got the defense playing a shift on you. He's got two strikes now, but if there's no strikes and they're giving you a free base hit right there down the third base line. Oh, here we go. What would you do? Um. Don't say bunt. Would you bunt for a hit? No. No. What? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Mr. Got you has been talking to you over here off the camera, right? <laughs> yeah. That's got a free hit. That's a free hit for you out there. They're not paying Seth Smith to bunt. There's nobody on base. You're winning two to nothing already. If it's a zero zero one to nothing game, if it's a one run game, yeah. Brennan, me and you got to talk after this, okay, buddy? Okay. <laughs> you got to get those easy base hits right there. Those add up. Two and two to Seth Smith after. Chase Anderson got Liriano to strike down. He bounces that one into the shift, and there's Mark Trumbo. Let's look now at the back of the Brennan Price baseball car. These are uh, some of the stats we came up with for you, Brennan. Disneyland was your favorite place, huh? Yeah. Cardinals, they got a big game tonight. You going to watch that against the Bengals? For sure. Okay. Pizza, Bob Brennan would have loved that. And Modern Family. I watch Modern Family all the time. Yeah. Who's your favorite guy in Modern Family? Um... I have to say Luke. Oh, the kid? You can yeah. relate to him, right? Yeah. I can see that. All right. <laughs> Yasmani Grandal. Now, Yasmani Grandal is a catcher a lot of times, but he's playing first base today. Do you play other spots, too? Uh, yeah, I play first base because I know how to catch the ball when it's coming to me really That's a That's so. a key for any first baseman, I would think. Yeah. Now they're going into the uh, defensive overshift. Go ahead, Gonzo. This is where this is your part. It's an easy, easy <laughs> bunt right here. <laughs> Every guy that's done this has made an out, so it's hard to argue with that. Just take that easy hit. Go 
Brendan, when you're sitting on an 0 for 3 and they're doing this, you got to take that easy bunt hit right there. He's got two strikes now, but without two strikes, coming up to the plate, you see them do that? Bunt a couple times. Don't let him bully you, Brendan. <laughs> What do you like to study in school? How's school going? Oh, uh, good. Is it? Are you back in? Is it almost time? Yeah, we we've been in for I think a month now. A month? Holy cow! What happened to summer? I don't know. I just went away. That happens, huh? Wow. You got good teachers. Yeah. You got a problem with any of them? Come to us. We'll take care of it for you. A soft fly ball. This one might stay playable, but Dini's got to do an Olympic sprint to get there. And he can't quite make it as he slides into that fence. See, that's why you don't do the shift right there. If they're playing regular position, that's an out. See? <laughs> hey, you got me on that one. <laughs> Look at Dini. Look where he starts from. Well, it's amazing how much ground this guy covers every single day. I mean, the last two games, we've seen phenomenal plays by D.D. in the hole. Three balls and two strikes to Grandal. And it's a two-on walk. First walk issued by Chase Anderson, who has been in the strike zone all afternoon long. And now he'll work to Rene Rivera. Catcher, Rene Rivera. Now, Brennan, how would you uh, characterize the D-back season? What have you seen that's... Uh, that you can tell us about. Mm, I've seen many interesting plays happen this year. Um, sad about some of the trades that have gone, like Corrado Parra leaving. Yeah, that was a bummer. And Martin Prado. Um, I've watched some of their highlights. It's pretty amazing what they can do this year, keeping up with an okay record. Mm -hmm. And a lot of injuries. Yeah, a lot. Let me ask, are you a big fan of the instant replay? Do you like that? Yeah. You do like it? Yes. That's good. Do we do it too much, instant replay? No. You don't mind the delays and the, all right, we got to wait and look at it. And that's okay with you? Okay. Yeah. There are no wrong answers here. Chase Anderson now one ball, two strikes. This is a 6 2 count here on Padre hitters that Chase Anderson has gotten to. Where do you go next? Do you go to radio next, Brandon? Um, I think so. Yeah, you get to work with uh, Tom Candiotti and Greg Schulte over there. There's a guy in there named Leo. He gives you a hard time. You, you let us know. Okay. He kind of runs things over there and thinks he does. That's out of play. Yeah, that other guy, Candiotti, I think he pitched to Babe Ruth. You need to ask him, how was it pitching to Babe Ruth? Yeah. All his highlights was, are in black and white. Yeah, he played a long, long time ago. <laughs> Dad's over there going, no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> One and two on Rene Rivera. There's the strikeout. He chases the high fastball. Brennan Price. Brennan, thanks for coming, buddy. Great job. Thank you. Nice Appreciate you, it. Our Sanderson Ford, Fox hey, Sports Arizona Kidcaster. Back after this.
brought to you in part by Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Cox Communications. Bundle and save with Cox. Back here at Chase Field, downtown Phoenix, after a somewhat shaky start. Chase Anderson has settled down a bit for the Diamondbacks, and now they just need to get in some runs as Ender Inciarte starts the home half of the third against former D-back Ian Kennedy. First two batters of the ball game reached for San Diego with singles off Chase Anderson, Salarte and Liriano. And both came in on RBI outs for the Padres. They lead it 2 nothing. in Cigarte struck out his first time. Ender a pair of hits in the series both last night. He singled, he doubled, he scored a run. Chase Anderson has been pretty much in or around the strike zone all afternoon long. Same cannot be said for Ian Kennedy, who's thrown just a few more strikes than balls to this point. Ender laces that to left, but right at Seth Smith. Fans, it's that time again. Tweet us your fan photo. Gonzo on the case today. This is all you today. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. I got it. A lot of pressure. <laughs> you got it. So tweet us your fan photo with a Twitter and a hashtag and the whole thing AZ fan photo. For your chance to have your fan photo shown later in our broadcast. Luis Gonzalez is a one man search committee. Sent some good ones in this afternoon. Aaron Hill singled his first time up. Yikes. Be a good logo for the Snake Talk show, which is on radio after the ball game today. Always look forward to that drive home. We we get you home from the ballpark. Miss a couple exits. I'll be like Mike Lamb, just not knowing where I'm going, listening to the show. <laughs> just keep driving. Check that GPS, Jake, uh, trying to find his way home when mom called. Kind of jams up the phone. I'm sure the guys will give Jake a hard time once they found out he couldn't find his way home last night. It's a lot to absorb your first couple of weeks in the big leagues. You forget about all the little stuff. It's full. Aaron played in seven games on the 10 game road trip through Cleveland, Miami, and Washington, went three for 26. And the first two ball games of this series off. Back in there today. And he takes strike three. Thought he had ball four there, but Gabe Morales is not so fast. Four strikeouts for Kennedy. Right field. Get that one on the outer half of the plate. Right on the corner. And it came back. Starts that on the outer half and it just sneaks back in there and catches the strike zone. Two down for Peralta who struck out his first time. It's going to be a good test. I'm, I'm looking forward to see if Peralta, Lamb, those guys, lefty, lefty. Right in front of the D-back dugout. Nelson has it and that's the inning. A one, two, three, third for Ian Kennedy. Padres lead the Diamondbacks 2 0.
tune in Wednesday at 6 for the D-backs in Fox Sports Arizona charity broadcast to benefit the Diamondbacks Get Back Youth Jersey program. Donate $50 and you'll get a mystery ball signed by a current D-back player. $100 gets you two mystery balls, one current player and one alumni. 200 two mystery balls and Tony LaRusso autographed Hall of Fame ball. This is only during the broadcast. A special D-backs Fox Sports Arizona charity broadcast coming up Wednesday against the Dodgers at 6 o'clock. Chase Anderson at 50 pitches, 37 for strikes, and ahead of Cameron Mabin to open up the fourth. He's usually around the plate there. That one's pretty close there. The second inning, he threw 14 pitches, 13 of them were strikes. The only blemishes there in that first inning, they were able to jump on him early. Chase Anderson succeeds with great command with that fastball and that allows him to go to everything else to change up in the curve but as Kirk Gibson said last week he has not shown yet that he's the kind of pitcher that has that great command all the time but he's always been able to make the pitch to get out of it for the most part and that's been a very encouraging intangible that Chase has shown as a rookie this year. He will battle out there. He'll dig in. Even when he doesn't have that command, he will oftentimes find a way to give you five or six innings when he's not at his best. And he strikes out Maven. Four strikeouts for Chase Anderson. One down in the fourth. And he seems to be much more comfortable, much more in a rhythm, Gonzo, than he was to start the ball game. Yeah, he's starting to hit his location there. Miggy sets up on the outer half. Throws that fastball up and away. Maven trying to pull it. Gets a strikeout. Chris Nelson struck out looking his first time. Chase just up here. Throwing strikes, misses there, 1 0. When he's having a, an off day, Chase Anderson, where he's not commanding that fastball, not real sharp spotting it on the corners. That's when he gets behind in the counts. And that's when it's a real struggle. Miguel Montero has said Chase. Well, frankly, he's been getting behind in the count too much lately and getting away with it oftentimes. And Chase agrees. He says you just make it so much harder when you get behind in the count. And he has been throwing strikes today. Right to Aaron Hill. Two down. Tell you when balls are hit like that at second base when they have the smallest glove in the infield, the guys up the middle, second and shortstop. Shortstop. You better be sure you get that one in the webbing and not in the pocket. That'll hurt. That was barreled up hard. Two down, Alexi Amarista. Singled his first time up. And a couple of hits in Friday night's ball game. 0 for 2 with a walk last night. Amarista now mostly playing shortstop with Everett Cabrera on the DL these days. But uh, he is a guy who can and will play everywhere. And Bud Black is a manager that loves to use versatility. He will play a whole bunch of guys, a whole bunch of spots. Sometimes two or three different positions in one game. And Amarista has started at short, third, second. He's played center. He's played left. Over the head of Glenn Hoffman. And uh, Scott Chan is there to feel that one down the left field line. Well played by Scott. Our Golden Glover down there. Our Golden Glover down the right field line is the mountain. Gregor Carr. Chopper back to the mound. And Chase Anderson works a 1, 2, 3, 4th. He has really settled in. Be back trail at 2 nothing.
in the Packs will host the annual alumni presented by Sanderson Ford. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Bob Brenly bobblehead. Current D-backs will wear throwback purple and teal uniforms. After game, the third annual alumni game with all your favorites. For tickets, visit dbacks.com slash alumni. A Bob Brenly bobblehead got one up here in the booth, and it's a tremendous bobblehead, and there's another Goldie bobblehead coming up in September. By the way, the uh, alumni draft continues. Team Gonzalez and Team Swindell. Uh, Gonzo went with Rodrigo Lopez for the first overall pick. Greg Swindell countered with Steve Finley. The second round selections are in, and uh, Gonzo continues to load up on pitching. Brandon Webb. Your sinker, second round selection. Sinker baller. So you're really going to try and win this one with pitching. I'd, I'd say defense, but you're playing in the outfield. Well, that's so why I went for the sinker ball. Just I don't pitching. want any yeah, balls in the gap. In the I'm infield, going for right? guys hit ground balls. I like it. Good strategy. Uh, who did uh, Swindell pick in the second round? I missed that one. Turner Ward. He went with hitting coach Turner Ward. Now he's got to figure Turner's been taking a lot of swings in the cage, working with Diamondback hitters. So he's going to try and out slug you. Alumni game coming up on Saturday. Diamondbacks will wear the purple and teal throwbacks in the game against the Rockies. And then after the game, our third annual alumni night. Team Gonzalez versus Team Swindell. Well, I'm hoping some of the guys come a little rusty and pitching just at 75, 80 mile an hour fastball. Looks like about 95 to some of the guys. Well, I hope those guys are okay to pitch. That's um, a little concern. Uh, you know, Webby. Webby's living a life of leisure right now. He's he got his feet up. Watching ball games on TV. I know that uh, Rodrigo has been throwing. And he's going to play winter ball this year. Alumni night. You can read all about it. Latest issue of D-Vax Insider here at the ballpark. One of the old school colors. That's Saturday against the Rockies. One and two to Trumbo. Off the fist. Little Loper. And it drops in. Well, not exactly what you're looking for with Mark Trumbo, but it's a base hit. Not the hardest ball that Marcus ever hit. No, and the benefit that Trumbo has, he's a power hitter, so the defense usually plays him. The outputters play him a lot deeper. So you're able to get those fisted hits. Got it up and in. And your first reaction in the outfield, when you see a big swing like that from a big guy, you start going back. And by the time you see that that ball's in, it's got a better chance of dropping in for a base hit. Third hit for the D-backs. Lead-off man aboard in the fourth for Miguel Montero, who walked his first time. Now, if you're going to have all these pitchers, uh, Gonzo, you better draft a catcher. You got anybody in mind? I mean, is, oh, Henry Blanco is playing in this game. You could, could draft uh, Hank White. Give away all my secrets out here. Huh? I'm just saying it's just common sense. You're going to load up on pitchers. You better have someone that can handle the staff. I'm trying to work the waiver wires here with some of these guys. I notice your phone's been blowing up. <laughs> I hope it's all good news. There's Henry Blanco. Henry's going to manage in uh, Venezuela this winter. Diamondbacks assistant hitting coach. And he's a positive guy to be around. He's going to be great influence to all these young players. Kennedy 50 pitches 30 for strikes. In front of the Diamondback dugout and another chance for Nelson. We got to bring those seats in a few feet here. Miggy was trying to lean to try to get it to go foul. But lean it up. You see the swing. He's trying to push it out. Get foul. Get foul. <laughs> Got a curveball hanger and he just missed it. One out for Marte who flying out his first time. Diamondbacks trying to close out a sweep and win three straight for the first time since the third week of July. 
They've won five of their last six against the Padres. The brooms are out here, Chase. It's a pretty creative hat. A lot of work went into that. I like it. Let's see if he could leave something up over the zone for Marte. He's got power to hit one out of here. When he barrels it up, it goes. There's no question. Had two homers on the season. And 11 homers with Reno. Slugged over 500 in Triple A, but he's down one and two. And we've seen occasional glimpses of that power here. But the issue has been making contact. Well, he's gotten a pretty good opportunity to step in and play some games with Trumbull playing first base now. In his third stint with the big league club this year. And he's off that one. That was a pitch he might have chased earlier this year. He was up in May, played in 11 games, five starts, and didn't hit much. In his second stint with the D-backs, only five games, but he went three for nine, including that first big league homer at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, a pinch hit grand slam. Nelson at third. They get the lead run at Trumbo, but they can't turn two. Nice play by Chris Nelson at third base for the Padres. He's been busy down there. We talk about a reaction play over there at third base. That ball gets on you in a hurry. Made a nice play. Trumbo going in hard into second base. Solarte knew it. He was coming for him. Two down, Marte at first. Jake Lamb flying out his first time. He worked him inside for the most part. There's the strike down and in, 0 and 1. Jake nine hits in his last 10 games. Including his first big league homer last night. In, in, in. Everything is in. And he'll, he'll notice that and start to try to make adjustments or start cheating in there once in a while as a hitter. Cheating in. What cheating in. Just thinking to yourself, they're going to come in here and guess every now and then and open up the the doors and try to swing at that pitch inside. If he can get that barrel of the bat to it, it'll go a long way. I've seen Kennedy do that. Watch this one leak back out over the plate. Jake missed it. And he missed it. He was cheating inside. He was looking for that <laughs> pitch. His front hip comes flying out. He'll get it back in there. Setting up inside again, Rene Rivera. Two and two. I mean, this is uh, fairly relentless from Kennedy. Every single pitch is on the inner half, most of them for balls. Well, after a while, some of these young players, they've been up here for a while. The scouting report starts to get out there of their strengths and weaknesses. And they try to expose them as quick as you can. But as a hitter, you have to try to continue to make adjustments. Coming back inside again and misses. It's full. And, and Lamb's doing a great job of that from the first game of this series to yesterday. He started laying off that pitch inside. There you see the Fox tracks. All those pitches are in. He's laying off those pitches where earlier when he first got here, he was swinging at those and a little bit more aggressive. Now he's being more selective at the plate. Three and two, two outs. Marte will be off from first with a pitch. There goes the runner, and it's in the dirt. Ball four. He did not go around, says Marty Foster at third. It's a two-out walk for Lamb. A good at bat there for Jake. We continue to see progress. Yeah, that was the first curveball he's seen all day. He had been getting nothing but fastballs on the inner half of the plate. Two on, two out for Didi. Now let's take a look at how Gonzo, they work Jake Lamb, as we mentioned, everything inside. 
They want to definitely looks like they want to tie him up. They don't want him to get his hands extended. Fastball in another fastball inside. And that one just kind of leaked over the middle of the plate. He missed it. Fastball in. Fastball in. And the last pitch curveball. That's a good at bat right there. It really is. He was very patient and selective. A chance for Didi. Last time up, he lined one down the right field line for a double, his fourth of the year. I'd like to see Didi shoot one in that right center field gap and run for days. <laughs> and there it is, out by the pool. And get it to the pool, and he should have three easily. Tie this game up. It in the air to center. It's well hit, but Maven is there at the track. DD gave it a ride, but the Diamondbacks strand two and through four. They trail it 2 nothing. Luis Gonzalez back with you. That's our group from Prescott Valley. You know how they got here aboard the Fox Sports Arizona Fan Express. And here they are. Nice job, everybody. Round trip transportation to and from ball game from Prescott Valley. Here they are. Chase Anderson after a rocky first and a couple of hits in the second has settled in nicely. He's retired four in a row. He's walked one. He's got four strikeouts. Yeah, he's done a great job after that first inning settle in starting to find his feel of, for the rotation up there curveball fastballs everything starting to throw him for strikes. He's got to get him some runs uh, chase Anderson was the guy when he first started this year who got all the run support there seems there's always one. One guy gets none the other guy gets everything and uh, chase was the guy for whom the Diamondbacks would score his first five starts all wins they. Scored 45 runs for him. But over the last nine games, only 35. Trying to change that to trend here today, but so far nothing for the D backs, just three hits. Yeah, he just showed a shot of Nuno there. He's the guy. He's got to start taking guys out to <laughs> get some meals or something to <laughs> butter him up a little bit, get him to score some runs for him when he's out there on the mound. And to his credit, I thought the great thing that. Bedell said after the ball game last night after he oh just so deserved the win pitched a tremendous ball game got the no decision Diamondbacks won five two it, the thing he said was I'm just glad the Diamondbacks won the game that I pitched and we won that hadn't happened yet now he just needs to get some credit because he has uh, really pitched well yeah, he, he it's frustrating after a while for a pitcher like that he goes out there Every single day and gives you everything he's got and he holds the team down and you're not able to hold that lead. And it's disappointing especially for the guy who comes in to try to take over. Hold that lead down for him and yeah, last night it was Oliver Perez who. 
Came on in the eighth, and Solarte knocked one up the middle. Anderson loses Kennedy, walks the pitcher to lead off the fifth. That's a no-no. Second baseman, Jan Herbis, Solarte. And that definitely doesn't sit well whenever you got a pitcher leading off the inning. It's almost a free out, and you end up walking him. And now you've got Solarte on Herbie Solarte, who has been so good in this series, singled and scored in the first. He flied out his last time up. And now Anderson has had trouble throwing strikes. I think he's going to go out there, try to settle him down. See if he can get him back on track. Chase Anderson says even after his poor outing last week that you know felt real good physically. That was a concern. And what cropped up for him was something he's been working on all season. Which is fighting himself not to rush to the plate in situations like this. He's trying to keep that front side closed, don't let it fly open toward the first base side. That's what has hurt in the past his ability to consistently find that command he needs. But to feels it's been lately more of a matter of execution than anything physical, which is certainly good news. After starting 0-2 on Ian Kennedy, he's thrown now seven straight balls. He's definitely trying to find it. Got to get it in a hurry. Get in trouble here. Trying to find the strike zone. You know, and Harvey Salarte looks at ball four, and then this is trouble. Let's hear from pitching coach Mike Harkey about what he sees in these very situations when Chase Anderson is struggling. I think the biggest thing you look for is velocity. I think the second thing you look for is command of his fastball. And uh, when you lose both of those things, it, it makes it very hard to compete. And, uh, you know, that's probably the basis for, you know, determining the, the strength or weaknesses of any starting pitcher. Well, the command has vanished here, Gonzo. He had a one, two, three, four. The the struck out Rivera to end the third strike out maybe to open the fourth he'd retired four in a row but he begins the fifth by walking the first two he faced and he's thrown only two strikes in this inning he had only had two three ball counts until the last two hitters that he's walked so. and he's got Kennedy on second Salarte on first nobody out and the powerful rookie Reimer Liriano's up there You got to be careful here, especially with a couple of ducks on the pond, because Liriano, who's only played a handful of games in the big leagues, just 23 years old, has got tremendous raw power. That's nine balls in a row he's thrown. There's a strike. This was Reimer Liriano's first major league home run on the roof of the Western Metal Supply Building at Petco Park. Up there by the restaurant, 427 feet. In his first week as a big leader, double play ball here. Gregorius Hill, Trumbo, they roll it. Kennedy into third, two outs. And he'll take the 6 4 3 double play. What he ended up going to was his curveball. He threw nine balls in a row, threw two curveballs for strikes, gets a ground ball double play. Nice play by Mark Trumbo there to keep that foot on the bag as Aaron Hill's throw was tailing away from the first base bag. And Trumbo stretches out and keeps that foot on there. And we like to call those good meetings when your pitching coach goes out there and then you get that double play right after. Whatever he said worked. 75 pitches, 50 for strikes. Seth Smith looks at ball one. And the Diamondbacks once again go into the defensive overshift. Gregorius all by himself between second and third. Lamb the third baseman on the first base side of second. And now once again, Anderson is falling behind. It's 2 0. Well, Didi was playing a little bit closer towards the baseline, and now he's moved back because of the count is 2 0. I'd still bunt. You're giving him a free run here. 
You don't even have to bunt a good bunt down the third base line. Just get it anywhere in the general area. And so essentially a safety squeeze. Yeah, just just bunt. Just throw it out there. It's two outs. Yeah, but you're going to bring Kennedy home is what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we'll save kind of a safety squeeze. Well, there's two outs. If the ball's in contact, he's going to go anyway. So. All right, I got it. But look, now D.D. shifted even further out towards up the middle. Somebody's going to eventually end up doing if this. If somebody you know, doesn't bunt, you're going to burst. I can tell you that. I ended up walking him there. Oh, it has been uh, all one, two, three, and four in this inning. Three walks in the inning for Chase Anderson, First including one to the pitcher to lead off the inning. And now they're on the corners with two outs for Yasmani Grandal. Figure out the defensive alignment again as Lamb will go back to that second base spot and Aaron Hill on the grass in right field. Rondala's switch hitter much better from the left hand side. That's where he's got most of his power. In fact, all 10 of his home runs this year have come as a left hand hitter. See, I don't understand the concept here. I mean, I hit pretty much third in the batting order my right. career here at, with Arizona. What, what don't you like? I mean, we're, I'm winning two to nothing. I got a free RBI sitting out there. Because that's why you don't bunt right there. Gone. Well, it worked out there for him, but not every time that's going to happen. It did this time. Grandal, his 11th, and it's 5 nothing Padres. And the wheels have come off for Chase Anderson in the fifth. I mean, that ball was questionable for a strike too. That ball was out over the outer half of the plate. He didn't miss it. The 13th home run given up this year by Chase. And that's a base hit by Rivera. Knocks it by Lamb and into left. And the bullpen is still quiet for the Diamondbacks. Center field, Cameron Mavis. Well, nice try by Jake Lamb right here. Ball hitting the hole. Giving an all out effort. Cameron Mabin has singled and struck out one for two. Three walks in the inning by Chase Anderson. Two of them have scored. They just seem to have taken the wind right out of it. Sales here for the whole stadium. And now the phone starts ringing in the D backs bullpen. Will Harris is going to get busy down here. Again, the concern with Chase Anderson, the workload and the innings. 39 innings to start the year with Double A Mobile. 87 in the big leagues coming in. So at 126 for the year and five to that. The ball. Here goes the runner, and Maven strikes out, but the Padres. Get three in the fifth. Anderson walks three, two score on the Grandal homer, and it's five nothing.
few weeks, you and your dog can escape the heat as Bark in the Park is back at Chase Field. D-backs and Padres Sunday, September 14th. Come early for the pregame puppy parade around the warning track. You can only bring your dog if you pre-register. So make sure you do that by a special Bark in the Park ticket package. You can get your ticket package at dbacks.com slash Bark in the Park. Wrong kind of dog, but I uh, see where you're going there. Pitcher spot is due up here to lead off the inning. And Xavier Paul will hit for Chase Anderson, who uh, has had another very disappointing outing. A three-run homer by Osmani Grandal. Three walks in the inning for Chase. And now it's five zip. So far, Ian Kennedy has given up only three hits. Chase Anderson, four, five runs, four earned. Gave up six hits, including a home run. Walked four. That was what really got him. And it seemed to happen suddenly. He had, after a rough first, settled in nicely, retired four straight to end the fourth. And then walk, walk, double play ball, walk, home run. Yeah, left everything up in the strike zone. Couldn't really seem to find anything down. Left that pitch up to Grandall, and he didn't miss it. He broke his bat. Solarte at second. Kennedy has to hustle over there to cover. So it's a 4-1 put out to open up the fifth. Gonzo based on Chase Anderson lasting only two innings on uh, Tuesday in D.C. And what we saw seen here today. Uh, for you, does he get another start this year? Well, I mean, aside from the first and fifth inning, the second, third, and fourth, he pitched fantastic. He just seemed to lose it in those two innings. So, I, I mean, I, I would have to think that they would sit down with him and kind of make a decision on how he feels and uh, just talk to him and ask him to be honest with him. And if, if he's really tired, then I would have to look a different direction. Tuesday at D.C., he lasted only two innings. Six runs on six hits. He walked three in that ball game. He goes five here today, walks four, gives up five runs on six hits. But for him, really, it, it was little spurts where he would lose his command. And but when he lost it, it went. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, he threw at one point. He threw what nine balls in a row. Yeah. And so, five more innings for Chase Anderson. At this point, you're counting every inning to try and figure out exactly when to shut him down. So five more gets him to 131 this year, counting the minors and the majors as Inciarte strikes out. 131 would put him 43 innings over what he threw last year at Triple A Reno. 43 innings more in one year. That's a big jump. Yeah, that's a lot of innings, especially for a young player that you're expecting to be one of the corner cornerstones of your staff for the next couple years to come. And there's been so much to like about this season from Chase Anderson. And you don't want it to end like this. You want it to end on a positive note over the long winner as Aaron Hillmock's that in the center. But the innings are starting to add up. Aaron Hill two for three. Well, I know you talked about it earlier. There's been a lot of talk around baseball now where most teams are actually thinking about going to that six-man rotation just to save some of the innings and I think was it you Darvish that said you know back at in his country that's what they do they go to six yeah, you, pitch, you pitch once a week and it's your, you know like college you're the Friday night starter that kind of a thing David Peralta 0 for 2 well there are some guys they want to get a look at so it kind of works out for the D-backs you're worried about maybe Josh Coleman or getting a little fatigued or certainly Chase Anderson and at the same time, you've got guys you'd like to see get some starts. So it's not like they don't have the, the bodies to fill a six-man rotation. We're told Randall Delgado will likely get some starts in September. You could, you could put Andrew Chafin up here, give him a couple of more starts, another look. There's always Archie Bradley, of course. Now, if they go to a six-man rotation, does their pitch count go up as far as, you know, more, most teams are limited to 100, 110, and they usually get them out. Do they let them throw a little bit more? Deeper into the games? No, because I think then you're risking injury. 
Well, if they're only throwing one time a week, they have more rest time. Yeah, but then you're sort of nullifying. The idea of a six-man rotation is to kind of slow down the innings. And if you're just going to have them throw more innings every time they start rather than space out the starts, then it's sort of yeah, but it's they a have wash. More, to me, they have more rest in between. No question. I think it depends on each guy and how yeah. each guy feels physically and what kind of season he's had in terms of the workload. But uh, if you want to go to that six-man rotation, they have the guys to do it, and uh, it seems like that's a fairly attractive option at this point. Well, I think the game now has become more specialized with setup guys and situational guys that most pitchers now, they, they tend to train to go five, six, seven innings. That's it. They don't really go for the for the long haul anymore. He said for Peralta, dunks it in the right. And a pair of two-out singles against Ian Kennedy. Nice job by Peralta there just fighting that off. Well, pitching has become more and more scarce, and it's always been critical, but now more so than ever. And uh, when you get some of these top-flight guys, they are such big investments that they, they're going to protect them at all costs. Oh, absolutely. There's more dollars being paid to these pitchers now. Think about Wade Miley's going to start Wednesday against Clayton Kershaw. And, and look at Kershaw. I mean, Clayton Kershaw is going to make an average under his new contract of $31 million a year. A seven year, $215 million extension in January for Clayton Kershaw. Now, he's the best in the game, but when you've got a, an investment like that, you're going to be very careful. Yeah, absolutely. Lock him up in a glass box after games. Make sure he gets home safely. Absolutely. And then you got guys like CC Sabathia who's getting paid a lot of money with the Yankees, and he's done for the season. He might be done. Period. And for the exact reason you mentioned, CC Sabathia has always been a, a workhorse. Even when he was in Milwaukee for that half season, he'd pitch on three days rest. He'd do whatever the Brewers asked him to. But uh, there's a guy that has logged inning after inning, year after year, and now it seems to have caught up to him. The velocity way down. And it's not so much always arm injuries as CC's got uh, knee and leg issues, too. Pitcher's legs are so important. Kennedy behind 3 0 now on Trumbo. 80 pitches for Ian, 47 for strikes. Mark can run into one right here. He lays off. It's a walk. The bases are loaded for Miguel Montero. Dayhill and Miley, Tuesday and Wednesday. And here comes Darren Bosley, the pitching coach. Diamondbacks one swing away from making this a one run ball game, and we know. Oh, well, that Miguel Montero is very familiar with Ian Kennedy. In fact, he has homered off Kennedy earlier. And so we'll see if the walks, which got Chase Anderson into trouble in the top half of this thing, can come back and bite Ian Kennedy. This was Miguel Montero and Ian Kennedy earlier this year. Echo Park, and there it goes. I think for most hitters, when they go up to play and, and face somebody that they've played with, it's always tough because they know their strengths and weaknesses. Gell's had great numbers against him. Four for nine with a home run. Big at bat in the ball game right here. A chance for the D-backs to get back in this. Bases loaded, two outs, down five nothing. And former battery mates go head to head. There's the strike going on. Maybe with two career grand slams, like to get his third one right here. He's got Aaron Hill at third, David Peralta the runner at second, and Mark Trumbo at first. And Miggy having an excellent series on base three times in each of the first two games. He has. Walked and popped out today. 
And his 13th home run of the year on Friday night. Base it to center field. Hill scores. They will wave Peralta. Here he comes. He will score. And it's a 5-2 ball game. Miguel Montero. RBI 66 and 67. Mickey time. Here at Chase. Nice job by Miguel Montero. Gets a pitch up in the strike zone. Just stays right back up the middle with it. And a chance for the middle infield to get that. Peralta running hard around third base to score easily here on a base hit. Two RBI single for Miguel Montero. Four straight have now reached for the D-backs. All with two outs. And they'll get the tying run to the plate with two down. It's Alfredo Marte. There's that swing we see so often with Marte, 0 and 1. Aaron Hill single after Paul grounded out and Inciarte struck out. Hill single, Peralta single, Trumbo walk, Montero two run single, four straight, all with two outs. And A. Rivera keeps it in front. Throwing his first two pitches away away. He doesn't want Marte to get something over the middle part of the plate. Nick Vincent's Alex Torres, the right hander and the left hander, are heating up. Kennedy at 85 pitches, 50 for strikes. It's the strike call from Gabe Morales. That might have been up a bit. D backs looking for another big two out hit here. On the is short. Amarista. They go the short way for the force on Montero, and that's it. But the Diamondbacks get two. Miguel Montero drives in a pair. And through five, they trail it 5 2. Two as we start the sixth inning. And some good news down on the farm. Last night at Triple A Reno, some of the Diamondback on the road to rehab. Chris Owings is two for four in that ball game. Nick Ahmed three for five, including a home run. And AJ Pollock is back as well. And now Daniel Hudson this week will join those guys on the rehab road. And hopefully we'll see all of those guys up here pretty soon. And Chris Owings, we're told, will play second base when he returns. Chris Nelson leads off the sixth of the Padres. New pitcher for the D-backs. It's the right-hander Will Harris. I think Will's 
job here is to try to hold them intact so they can get their offense back in there to try to play some catch up and get some runs back. Just keep that number at five and give them a chance to get back in it. And they got to Ian Kennedy is four straight reached with two outs in that fifth. Nelson 0 for 2. He was 0 for 3 last night. This guy, a former first round pick by the Rockies. In fact, he was the ninth overall selection in the draft 10 years ago. Draft ahead of Neil Walker, Jared Weaver, Billy Butler, Stephen Drew. Played most of this year at AAA. Still 92 miles an hour, keeping it down in the strike zone. You'd like to have a quick inning to get your offense back in there. Scratching and clawing to get back. Maybe you got the big two out single. Nelson can hold up. Montero will complete the strikeout. Follow every D backs game through the end of the season with MLB.com at bat. The number one app for live baseball on your smartphone phone or tablet. Download the at bat on the app store and visit dbacks.com slash mobile today. Watch all the games on your phone. Pitcher spot is due up third in the bottom of this inning for the Diamondbacks. So just need one strong inning out of Will Harris here. Pitcher spawn is up next for the Padres. E. Kennedy is back out on deck. Thought with the way that Ian seemed to be kind of losing it there in that fifth, that it maybe he'd hit the wall and they would take him out of there. But to the hands of this moment, he is ready to take the at bat. One and two on Alexi Amarista. You would figure facing his former teammates, he's going to want to be out there as long as he can. Mm -hmm. Marista signed by the Angels in 2007 out of Venezuela. He played the minor leagues with Patrick Corbett in the Angels system, and Patrick was raving about him as a player in the minor leagues. But the Angels gave up on Amarista as a shortstop prospect, sent him to the Padres two years ago in a trade for old friend Ernesto Frieri. Kind of built like the old Raphael for call. It's a little dynamite shortstop. Bounced back and got him in the knee. He's one of those gnats, those little pesky guys that can drive you crazy. Run up your pitch counts. Big guys, you know what they're going to do. They're mostly power hitters. You usually play those guys deep, but these little ones, they slap the ball around, move it around a little bit. Little guys. Hanging in there. Padres wrap it up a long road trip here. Ten games in 11 days. They started in St. Louis, lost three of four there at Bush. Lost two of three at Dodger Stadium, and now Bud Black trying to avoid the sweep here at Chase to wrap up the roadie. Yes, he went, says Gabe Morales. Second strikeout for Harris, two down. And here comes Ian Kennedy. Pitcher Ian Kennedy. And Sam Marista to chase that one in the dirt, and he can't hold up. Yes, he went, says Morales behind the plate. So two down for Kennedy, who has laid down a sacrifice bunt and walked and scored. Came in on the Grandal homer. A three run shot in the fifth that made it 5 0. Diamondbacks answered with two in the home half. A two run single by Miguel Montero. Oh. 
Harris has certainly come in and done his job so far getting the first two hitters on strikeouts. 14 pitches 11 for strikes. He's not messing around out there. Throwing that cutter. There's a strike. For a base hit here, Jake Lamb. A one, two, three, six for Will Harris. We'll go to the home half. D backs trail at 5 2. Out there for the sixth inning. A reminder: FoxSportsArizona.com. All your online local sports coverage you won't find anywhere else. Oh, that's cool. We got Jack McGruder right now writing his post-game analysis. He'll have reaction from the D-backs clubhouse. Randy Hill covering the Mercury playoff series, Game Two against the Sparks. I have guaranteed a Mercury WNBA championship. And Craig Morgan reports from tonight's Cardinals-Bengals game. Be watching that right after our ball game. We'll see if Ian Kennedy continues to work Jake Lamb inside. Jake so far has flied out and walked and has seen almost nothing except fastballs on the inner half of the plate from Kennedy. Now let's see how they approach the rookie here to lead off the sixth. Hello. We'll try to throw a backdoor breaking ball there. To right, Jake Lamb looking better and better and better. On base for the second time today. Jumped on that when it knocked it into right field. Yeah, he did, and that pitch went right down the heart of the plate. He's starting to recognize pitches a lot better. He's staying off of that one that was inside that he was swinging out a couple days ago. It's a way to get it started. Now Didi, who has hit the ball really hard twice today, a double down the right field line in the second. He smoked one to center that may have been tracked down to end the fourth. Pitcher spot is due up. Jordan Pacheco is in the on deck circle. I'll tell you, Jake Lamb gets a couple more base hits like that. That average jumps up in a hurry when. You so you get to 100 at bats. Yeah, you can fluctuate a lot. 50 points or so with a good Absolutely. weekend. That's something. why you can't panic, especially a young guy. Once they get up there, they have a you know a short stint where they don't do so well. Then they get a, a couple days in a row or a week long where they get hot and their batting average jumps up. 
And Jake in his first game in this series and a single a run scored an RBI. And last night the homer a single an RBI he scored twice. He's been on base twice today a walk and a single. Vincent has started throwing again in the Padre bullpen. 0 and 2 on D.D. Gregorius. And check and there's the strikeout one away. That's six strikeouts for Ian Kennedy. He just couldn't hold up enough there. He tried. For Will Harris, number 31, Jordan Pacheco. Jordan Pacheco announced as the hitter for Will Harris. Dice thrown in a Sanderson Ford bullpen. Jordan 226 on the year, both with the Rockies and the Diamondbacks. He has been scuffling as of late three for his last 23. Jake Lamb, the runner at first, one out. In the air, center field. Smith and Maven, it'll be Maven. That's allowed out number two. And you could play Kachinko by signing up at one of the 16 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Arizona Diamondbacks regular season home game. Two down for Ender Inciarte, who's 0 for 3. He has struck out twice. Coming off a two hit night last night. So what have you seen from Ender that you've liked? Seems like he's been a guy that has really progressed here. He really has, and we talked about it a couple days ago, his first time up. He really didn't get out of the gates good, and now he just seems to have found a home here. Slaps that to left center field. That gets down and rolls to the wall. Here comes Jake Lamb. They are waving him home. There is no throw. It's an RBI double for Ender and Ciarte. It's a two-run ball game. Dip it away. Yeah, has Ender did a great job there. He's been getting a lot of off-speed pitches. They got a changeup by Ian Kennedy down in the strike zone. He went with the pitch out to left center field. 11th double for Ender in Ciarte. 5-3 ball game, and that is it. That will chase Ian Kennedy. It's a two run game. Don't go anywhere back after this.
down 5 nothing at one point. It's now a 5-3 ball game after Ender Inciarte. RBI yeah, double chases Ian base Kennedy. Base he leaves responsible for the runner at second and two outs. And here is the right-hander Nick Vinson. His 45th appearance of the year. Vinson missed about a month this summer with shoulder soreness, but he's been back from the DL well, since the middle of July. He has worked to a 379 ERA. He'll face Aaron Hill as the tying run at the plate with two outs in the sixth. Aaron, a good day so far. A pair of singles. He has scored a run. He had a couple days off to start this series off, so this is the first game he's played in this series. It's that along the right field line. Grandal might have room. It's on top of the dugout and out of play. And Aaron a little uh, shaken up, said Kirk Gibson, from some diving attempts at ground balls at second base. A little beat up, nothing serious, but just needed a day or two. Certainly tie this thing up with one swing. Jam foul pop up behind the seats. And he went up and in. Aaron these days didn't see a whole lot of pitches on the inner half. Everything has been away, away, away. That's been the story of his season. He's been one of those guys getting a lot of breaking balls yep. and off the plate. Dead pull fastball hitter. So he rarely sees anything on the inner half. Goes away, lays off. He did not go. That's Rob Drake down at first. Gotta love the Drake. A little slider he tried to throw over the outer half of the plate just off the plate. See how long Rene Rivera behind the plate waits to set up. He does not go back out there if they want it down and away until after Vincent has started his motion. So there is no target for the pitcher to throw to. Watch Rivera. You wait. There he goes. And Vincent pulls it outside. It got behind Rivera. In Ciarte will take a big turn at third. He'll stop there. And it's three and two on Hill. Close here. He starts setting up. Late goes away, and that ball just ran inside. Vincent so far has looked pretty erratic to his first hitter. It's three and two. Wild pitch moves Enciarte to third. Short fly right center. Solarte has it and they strand in Ciarte. But the Diamondbacks get one more. Chip it away here. Through six, they trail it 5 3.
at 6 o'clock for the D-backs and Fox Sports Arizona Charity Broadcast to benefit the D-backs Give Back Youth Jersey Program. Donate $50 for a mystery ball signed by a current D-back player. $100 will get you two mystery balls, one current player and one alumni. Or $200 gets you two mystery balls, a Tony La Russa autographed Hall of Fame baseball. Well, Cold Stone at the ballpark as we start the seventh inning. Diamondbacks trail at 5-3 here. We're down 5-0 at one point. We saw Will Harris work a 1-2-3-6. Now it's Matt Stites on for the seventh. And he has Gonzo looked really good lately, Matt Stites. Yeah, he really has. He's really starting to come around up there and fill his role for the Diamondbacks. And you got a fastball, a slider, changeup, all plus pitches. Everything's got good bite to it. And that stuff lately with the additional velocity now back up into the high 90s is really playing at this level. Yarn Harvey Salarte. He's been aboard twice, a single and a walk. He scored a run. Salarte looked like he might be the answer at third base for the Yankees this spring, and for a while he was. Played pretty well in April. Hit over 300 and slugged five home runs in May for the Yankees. June came along. He was hitting about 300. But then slumped badly, started shuffling back and forth between the Bronx and Triple A Scranton. And then he was dealt to the Padres just before the deadline in the Chase Headley deal. 95 from strength, some Stites. It's one and two. Yeah, you're right. When he first came on the scene in New York City, that's all you were reading and, and seeing. Yeah. This guy was playing phenomenal. He's hit pretty well with the Padres so far. Certainly had a good series here. He's bidding for another base hit at center field. Arte in front of Enciarte. One away. I tell you, Enciarte closed up pretty quick that, that bridge out there in left field. He was right on top of it. It is remarkable how much ground he can cover. Here's Reimer Liriano singled and scored in the first. He's one for three. Just up to the big leagues after spending most of the season with Double A San Antonio. 99 games there, had 14 homers. First pitch is bounced to second. Aaron Hill. Now with two outs, it'll be Seth Smith. Oh, nice job by Harris. Five pitches, two outs. Excuse me, Stites. But you got to be careful with this guy, Seth Smith. All 12 of his home runs have come off right hand pitchers. And. 34 of his 41 RBIs and an RBI ground out in the first walked and scored his last time. Up. You talk about two differences there lefties and righties doesn't get a lot of plate appearances against left handers. Required from the Oakland days for Luke Gregerson last December. Former Colorado Rocky there's a strike. He almost got the throwback Todd Helton there the way he stands over the plate and got the pants rolled up. Well, like Todd Helton he was a quarterback in the SEC. At Ole Miss. And they both uh, backed up the Mannings. Yeah, good call. You have really done your homework. I'm impressed. <laughs> Seth was uh, behind Eli Manning at Ole Miss and. Of course Todd Helton was. Backing up Peyton Manning in Tennessee. Uh, are you thinking about drafting Peyton in our fantasy football draft? <laughs> I had him last year and I don't cleaned think he's up. He's going to be around by the time my pick comes here. Well, he did so well last year. You're at the back end of the draft this year. A good start for Stites, but he's behind on Smith, three and one. After getting two quick outs to open up the seven. Was a knack on Stites, just his confidence and his, you know, just trying to find his location on pitches. 
Williams. That one in the left. Here comes Marte. And he tracks it down on the run. Good defensive in there for the D-backs left fielder. Alfredo Marte. And through the top of the seventh, the Diamondbacks trail the Padres 5-3. We will pause here to honor America just before the seventh inning stretch at Chase Field. Sing along as we pay tribute to our great nation with the singing of God Bless America. Padres 5 3 as we start the home half of the seventh inning. Sunday baseball is presented by Sanderson Ford. Nick Vincent back out there for San Diego, wanting relief of Ian Kennedy, who at one point had a 5 0 lead. Diamondbacks have made it a two run game, and Peralta leads off the seventh. It was 2 0 San Diego after the top of the first. Solarte and Liriano led off with singles against Chase Anderson. RBI outs by Smith and Brondahl made it 2 0. And then Chase Anderson just lost the strike zone in the fifth. He walked three in the inning, two of which scored on a three run homer by Yasmani Grandal is 11th of the year. It was 5 0 Padres, but the Diamondbacks got two back in the home half. A two run single by Miguel Montero after four straight reached with two outs against Kennedy. And then D backs added a third run on a two out RBI double by Ender and Ciarte. Yeah, and if you go back and think about it, that wild pitch in the first inning by Anderson moved those two runners up. Yeah. Those are the two runs that scored as a result of that. Well, Smith drove in a run with a ground ball. That would have been a double play. Peralta gets it started in the seventh, his second hit today. I tell you, when Peralta swings the bat, you watch him running down the line. That energy level is all the way on high. Here he comes busting out of the batter's box. That ball was in. He fought it off his hands, stayed up the middle with it. 
rounds that base every time hard. Him and NCR are two exciting young players that just play the game at full throttle. They're fun to watch run the bases. A chance for Mark Trombo now is just about due to launch one. Mark has singled and walked. He's been on base twice. And he has it safely now in 17 of his last 20 games. Teams are throwing him away more. You'd like to see him start driving that ball to right center field. He's been getting his base hit, just kind of poking it out there. Well, to his credit, he's either taking it the other way for the little knock singles or taking the walk if it's not a strike. He does not want to be an all or nothing guy up there, but you would like to see him show off some of that power. Is that one to center field, but Maven has room. Brings up Miguel Montero. Came up with two outs in the fifth, and the base is loaded and delivered. Nice job by Miguel Montero. A big base hit. Now well, he has been on base. Three times in each of the first two games of the series, and he's been aboard twice today. As Rene Rivera and Bud Black will go to the mound. He's had the left hander Torres warming up. And, yep, that's going to be it. He wants the lefty Torres. That's it for Nick Vincent. Diamondbacks have the tying run at the plate in the seventh with one out. Back after this. And a terrific series so far at the plate. He comes up with one out and David Peralta on first and he'll face left-hander with that protective cap. 58th appearance for Alex Torres at 278 ERA. That's the inside of Alex's Torres cap. Montero, two hits on Friday night, a home run and a double. On base three times last night, a walk and a two run single so far today. Maybe it's certainly 
Had his struggles a little bit against lefties hitting 213 with 97 plate appearances, and that's why Torres is in the game to face him on matchup here. A lot of sliders from this guy. Fastball slider. Peralta at first after a leadoff single. His best pitch is a changeup. I think he has homered twice off left hand pitching this year. <laughs> 0 and 2. And that ball was rocketed into the Padres dugout. Looks like they're trying to stay in under Mickey's hands here the first two pitches. Side by Miguel Montero staying off that pitch up. Most guys try to throw it up in a way there to get him to chase on it, stayed off of it. He's got a couple pitches to waste here on the ball and two strikes. What did you do when you had two strikes on you? I spread out a little bit. I I never kept the same. You know, it, it all depends. If you're feeling good at the plate, then you really don't change your stance that much. But with two strikes, I try to use the middle of the field, especially when they bring in these tough left-handers to face you for the matchups late in the game. If you got a mistake over the heart of the plate, then you're okay. But usually they bring them in to throw those breaking balls, middle away, try to get you to chase, get a bad swing. Just try to spread out and use the middle of the field. He spoiled a pretty decent pitch on that last one. I mean, back inside here, maybe. And they got him to chase the fastball down and in. Two down in the seventh. And now Bud Black is going to match up here. He's had the right hander, Dale Thayer, warming. And he's going to bring him in to face Alfredo Marte with two outs. And that fastball just stayed in, wasn't even on the plate, just kind of ran in. Another pitcher coming in. We'll be back after this. to navigate this seventh inning here they got 
Torres to come in and get the lefty Montero for the second out after Peralta's leadoff single. And now they'll go to the right hander, Dale Thayer, a 205 ERA in 57 appearances. He's brought on to work to the right hand, hitting Alfredo Marte with two down. Marte so far, 0 for 3. Thayer with the old school Goose Gossage mustache. Doesn't it look like? Goose would be proud of that, wouldn't he? Got the mutton shops going. Two and zero to Marte. Well, let's see if he challenges him here with a fastball. Hopefully, he'd leave something over the plate. He backs down five nothing. Got two in the fifth, one in the sixth. Looking for more in the seventh. They have out hit the Padres nine to six, but trail at five three. San Diego has the big hit, a three run home run by Yasmani Grandal in the fifth. We got a 2 0 pitch looking for a fastball. Good fastball on the outer half of the plate. Called strike two. Now 2 2 count. Like to see him be able to take that the other way and knock it down the right field line. Instead, it's 2 and 2. <laughs> Missed location on that one. The catcher was setting up right over the half of the plate and just ran back. Rivera, see where he sets up, down and away. He's lucky that one didn't get hit a long way. It leaked way back inside. Go to the same spot. It stays away though and runs the count full three and two. And now Peralta will be off with a pitch from first. Here. That one leaked up into a hittable zone for Marte. We'd like to see him square one of those up. He's gotten a couple good pitches to hit. We'll do it one more time. Breaking ball down in the strike zone. He swings so wildly, it seems like he's had a hard time staying down on some of those pitches. Peralta runs, and it's fouled off again. Peralta's uh, getting some sprints in down there. Well, Marte's battling continues to foul those pitches off. Tenth pitch of the at bat coming up. There goes Peralta one more time, and Marte knocks it into center field. Peralta heads for third. Time runs aboard for the D backs. 
Good at bat by Alfredo Marte. Yeah, it really was. He got some good pitches earlier in the A.B. and he fouled those pitches back. But he squared this one up and hit it right back up the middle. Just a cement mixer slider. It just stayed right there. Well, there's no one throwing in the Padre bullpen. So now Thayer will get the left hand hitting Jake Lamb, who has walked, singled, and scored a run. We've been charting Jake's progress throughout this series here, and we've seen more and more of it. He's up in a big spot right here. Two on, two outs, down two in the seventh. He really has. He's been a little more selective at the plate. He's getting that pitch that he likes to drive. Go back inside. That one leaked out over the plate, but Solarte is there to snag it and save a run. Diamondbacks have two on, can't get a run in. It's still a two-run game as we head to the end. Trailing 5 3 as we start the eighth. Pat Stites back out there for his second inning of work. And the Osbani Grandal will lead off the inning. He's got the big hit in the ball game. A three run homer in the fifth. And Gonzo, this is why you don't bunt because it's home runs to beat you. So well, I'm never going to hear the end of that one, but I still. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, that's the only one. Every time they put that shift on, I haven't seen anybody get a hit. Well, the way to beat it is to hit it over everyone's head. And uh, they're going to play him straight up, it appears. Andal's had a good day. Sacrifice fly RBI in the first. He walked in the third, a three-run home run his last time up. Dahl, the first round pick by the Reds back in the 2010 draft, the 12th player selected overall. Drafted one spot ahead of Chris Sale, the White Sox. The traded to the Padres in the Matt Latos deal after the 2011 season, along with Yonder Alonso. Born in Cuba, moved to the U.S. when he was 10, went to the U in Miami. He's a hurricane. In fact, played college baseball with Yonder Alonso. There's the strike. And Matt Stites gets him to chase. Montero completes the strikeout. One down in the eighth. Well, let's uh, see how you did, Gonzo. It's that time again. The AT&T fan photo with Catch the Twitter and the hashtag at home. Right. Friendly committee is adjourned right now, enjoying a well-deserved vacation. And Gonzo has selected. I'm glad Bob's not here to see this. This is. You well, broke the. 
There wasn't a lot to pick from today, but this one was the. Uh, yeah, sorry. That's Brandon Webb like. You broke the no varmints rule. <laughs> well, I just want to keep everybody entertained. Up I here. like the snake theme. I like that, especially with Snake Talk making his debut this go. weekend. Go. Uh, valiant effort. Thanks to everybody who tweeted in your fan photo brought to you by AT&T. Renee Rivera. It looked like it was a snake cake. <laughs> was it a cake? Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're confirming that? Yeah, it was a cake. All right, good work. I, desserts, hey. I like how, I like how all the support that I got just ran out of the room here on me. Well, that's not an easy job. That's <laughs> why we have a committee. I kept asking, what do you guys think? And nobody would reply, uh, yeah, so I, I just it. went with it. Jody has a question, I'm told, about the cake. Well, I don't know, Steve, if it's a cake. It kind of looked like a pinata to me. I thought it was like a piece of pottery or something. So, Jody, you may be right, Jody. It kind of had like the fringy, you know, thin paper look. Uh, just a thought. Yeah, I think she's right. I know my pinatas, apparently. Gonzo, that's that's kind of a well, that's why an interesting I, effort well, you by you. had a kid's birthday party or two. That's why game. I picked it. I wanted it to be controversial a little bit. So well, you nailed it. <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm just glad Bob's not here. <laughs> Me too. Hopefully right he's now. not watching with his MLB.TV app. Enjoying his vacation. If he's enjoying his vacation, that might have just ruined it. Two and two. <laughs> 97, he spikes it in front of home plate. Now it's full. And you guys always pick on the rookies when they come in to here. Cameron Maven is the next scheduled hitter, the center fielder, but Will Venable is out there on deck, the left-hand hitter. And he loses Rivera, a one-out walk. Looks like Matt in that at bat was overthrowing. Really kind of yanks some pitches down there, some fastballs. Number 25, Will Venable. And now Will Venable will hit for Maven. 221 on the year, five homes. And presumably stay in the ball game and take over in center. He is two for his last 18 up there. Venable was not in the ball game yesterday. Was hitless in Friday's series opener, and his year has been a struggle. After a good year last season, 22 homers and 53 RBIs, both career highs. And now Matt Stites is really struggling to find the strike zone. Out there trying to get him back on track is 22 pitches now. Is Stites a guy for you that could potentially close somewhere down the road? I think so. I mean, this is his third inning in the ball game, so or second inning, excuse me, in the ball game. So we're just, you know, he's usually one of those guys that comes in there and throws as hard as he can, try to get these guys, and but he could. I, I could see him. Closing eventually you got to have that right mentality and mm -hmm. he struggled the last time up a little bit with his command and control and to come in and close the game you got to be on on spot every time. I think we've seen him more confident lately he certainly got the stuff throws hard 96 98 stuff moves. That ball is driven to right center field. And it's in the pool. Will Venable, a two-run pinch hit home run. And it's 7-3 Padres.
Went down and got it. And those left handers like that pitch down in the strike zone. Chris Nelson. Seven Padre runs, five of them coming in on home runs. A three run shot by Grandal, a two run homer by Venable. Nelson 0 for 3, struck out twice. Today have scored on walks. Well, Diamondback pitchers have uh, and catchers have helped out a bit. Remember, Salarte and Liriano led off the ball game with singles. It was a pass ball charged to Miguel Montero in that first inning. So the runners advanced. Seth Smith got a RBI ground out that might have been a double play ball had the runners been on first and second. And then Grandal followed with a sack fly. There's the strikeout. Third time today that Nelson has struck out. So you factor that into the first inning. And then three runs scoring of the five that came in on the home runs. Three were walks. So it's the little things that add up. East has been a pest today. He's seen 16 pitches. Eight of them have gone for foul balls here. He's got himself his second hit today. Pair of singles for Alexi Amarista. So no one in the on deck circle. You're supposed to have somebody out there. And with the pitcher spot due up next, there was no one in the on deck circle. And now I think it's Thayer coming out here. <laughs> Nearly. Dude, get, get a helmet and get a bat and get out yeah. there. Kind of caught him by surprise, so here he comes. This is not a position that uh, Dale Thayer is used to finding himself. He's got Venable's helmet. Well, it worked for Will. You think some of the position guys are saying, don't grab that bat. <laughs> In fact, don't he might not swing the bat. There's his track. Well, Bud Black clearly wanted him pitching the eighth. He's got a 7 3 lead now. Let's see if he just looks at three here. Big swing and a miss, 0 and 2. And that swing looked like he was hoping to run into it. Swing hard, you might hit it. the strikeout for Stites, but the Padres add two more on Will Venables pinch hit homer and they lead it 7 3.
Diamondbacks trailing at 7-3. Didi Gregorius will lead it off. Pitcher spot is due up second in the inning, and Cliff Pennington is in the on deck circle. Didi has hit the ball hard twice today. A double in the second, a deep fly ball out to center in the fourth. He struck out his last time. Will Venable does indeed stay in the game. Takes over for Cameron Mabin in center. He hit for Mabin in the top of this inning and had a two-run homer. Anytime the D-back scores six runs or more, Taco Bell has given away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between 4 and 6 p.m. the following day at participating locations. With Pennington will hit for Stites. Penny had an RBI single yesterday. 268 and a home run. Foul back there by Pennington. And he's one of those guys. He's very versatile on the Diamondbacks team. He's a veteran player, can play anywhere around. So when you start bringing these young players up, whenever they, you know, there's a tough matchup or something for him, Kirk Gibson's able to put him in the lineup anywhere out there in the infield. And he can play just about elite defense at three different positions and switch hit. A valuable guy to have in your ball club. Cliff Pennington gets a hold of one and drives it out of here. His second of the season, and it's a three-run ball game. And now that Venable homer in the top half of the inning really hurts. Got a center cut fastball there. It got the barrel out. That feels good when you're coming in there. One AB in the game and you're able to deposit it into the seats. 7 4, still one out. Ender in Ciarte. Kevin Quackenbush is warming up with the Padre bullpen. Pennington's been swinging a hot bat too. Yeah, he has really hit the ball well since coming back from that thumb injury. In Ciarte and RBI double his last time. He's slow roll with a Solarte at second. And Chaz Roberts here, Commissioner, who will play the game. Ender in Ciarte. Another good day defensively for Ender. All the way to the right center field out in front of the pool. That was the ball that Rondahl hit in the first. It turned into an RBI single, but a great catch by Ender to keep it one run and an out. Two outs for Aaron Hill. A pair of hits, he has scored a run. When you go back and think about that play that he made, that play before was a Seth Smith ground ball if they don't get that pass ball or wild pitch that uh, Miggy missed at the plate moved the runners over that would have been the end of the inning there on that fly ball and you would have had a double play ball can't assume the double play but it certainly would have been likely and then the fly ball that would have ended the inning and that's two runs right there and then take out the three runs that were walks that came into the two homers 
And that's been the difference. And he shoots it down the right field line, but foul right to the mountain. Gregor Carr down there. The mountain, there he is. You a Game of Thrones guy at all? No, I'm not. Neither speedy. <laughs> you guys don't watch any of my shows. No. You got three 16 year olds. You don't have time to watch TV. No. Trying to keep up with them. That's what I mean. Well, I'm glad you still have time to prepare for the uh, for the draft, which is coming up. <laughs> Commissioner, Commissioner Candiotti. This is that one. Well, I believe the draft is going to be held when we're in San Diego to play the Padres. Yep, September 1st, I think. Well, you had that right on the top of your head, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another year of fantasy football. We hear some shouting and some arguing from the press box in September. That's why. Trying to get the commissioner ousted. Candiotti. I'm right there with you. Well, Aaron Hill is out of the inning. But Cliff Pennington gets his second of the year. A shot to right field. And will go to the ninth to chase at 7-4. Runs have done in the Diamondbacks. A three-run shot by Yasmani Grandal in the fifth. Padres led the ball game at 1.5 nothing. Diamondbacks chipped away with the two in the fifth. The two-run single by Miguel Montero. RBI double by Ender Enciarte in the sixth. Made it a five-three ball game. Venable a two-run homer in the eighth. Pennington a solo shot in the home half. And we're seven-four as we start the ninth. And the new pitcher for the D-backs, the left-hander Yuri De La Russa. Leading off for San Diego, second baseman, Yarnervis Solarte. Yarnervis Solarte leads off the ninth. Solarte, Liriano Smith, top of the order for San Diego. And Solarte, another good game for him. He's had a very good series. He's been on base twice, a single, a walk, he scored a run. Solarte playing second base for the second two games of this series. Jed Jerko tweaked a hamstring last week. They believe third base is probably Solarte's best position. They got him in the Chase Headley deal. But he's certainly a guy who can play all over. Played a lot of third for the Yankees. Some second, some short too. And he's also played a handful of games in left field. 
So there's some versatility for Bud Black. Hitting coach Phil Plantier right there. Foul at third. Plantier was a teammate of mine in my early years at the Houston Astros. That guy, the weirdest batting yeah. stance of all time. Crouch down, swing hard. Phil Plantier came up in the Red Sox organization. Red Sox had two great young sluggers in the minor leagues. Back in the day, it was uh, Phil Plantier and Mo Vaughn. At Pawtucket, they were going to be the future. Mo Vaughn, the hit dog, had a good career. Plantier played mostly in the National League. Not fouled a trumbo. And on the line there, one of one. Fox Sports support, Supports is a proud sponsor to stand up to cancer's fourth annual star-studded telecast. Catch the fundraiser featuring music performances and stars from film, TV, and sports in an inspiring Stand Up Against Cancer on September 5th at 5 p.m. on Fox Sports 2. Reimer Liriano. This guy will turn on an inside fastball. Slider misses down and away. 1 0. Liriano did not play anywhere last season. He had to sit out the entire year. Had Tommy John surgery, something that's a rare injury for outfielders. But seems to have recovered nicely. Popped him up. Mark Trumbo wants it. Two down for Seth Smith. Nice job so far by De La Rosa getting the first two guys out. Left fielder Seth Smith. This is uh, what's known as calling for it. Mark Trumbo. Smith an RBI ground out in the first. He walked and scored in the fifth. Seth Smith has worked out so well for the Padres. Got a new contract. Just last month, a two-year, $13 million deal. So he has signed through 2016 with San Diego. There's also a club option for a third season. Lots of offense here for the Padres. Seven runs on eight hits today. Their previous three games, they had totaled only four runs on ten hits. And that guy has got the big one, Grandal, a three-run shot in the fifth. Made it five nothing. Yeah, I think it's important to have guys like that, like Seth Smith on the team, just to have the veteran presence around. He's not going to be an everyday player for them mm -hmm. eventually, but the simple fact that he's a, he's the voice of reason in there to a lot of young players on the on the ball club. You can't just have a whole clubhouse full of rookies right he walked Smith on four pitches no because then they have no one to turn to they've never been in these situations so you always look to the veteran guys to try to help you out well De La Rosa gets the two right hand hitters and then walks the lefty with two outs and here's Grando Flipping Grandal around against De La Rose. He's got 11 homers this year, all from the left hand side. Including the one he hit off Chase Anderson back in the fifth. Look at his home run numbers. It's surprising to see that he's only hitting 205. He had a fairly encouraging start to the year, hit about 250 in April and looked like he'd be on his way, but then the rug just came out from under him. All through May and June, he hit under a buck 60. And he's been a little bit better since July the 1st, about 220 or so, but uh, it's been a struggle. Especially for a guy picked in the draft 12th overall out of the University of Miami. He looked like he would be the no brainer catcher of the future for the Padres two seasons ago hit 297. Eight homers but in November 
was suspended 50 games for violating MLB's PED policy, a positive testosterone test. Didn't get back into a game last season until the end of May and was back a couple of weeks. Played in fewer than 30 games and suffered a gruesome knee injury, a home plate collision in Washington. Tore apart the ACL in his right knee and worked all winter long to get back by opening day. Three and one is a strike. It's full. Runners are going to be moving on the pitch. Miguel Montero's letting them know. Seth Smith at first after a two out walk. Three and two to Grandal. There goes the runner. Strike three. De La Rosa strands the two out walk. We go to the home half of the ninth. Peralta, Trumbo, Montero, Century Link, your link to what's next. D backs trail at 7 4. Avoid the sweep. Diamondbacks need three here against the new pitcher, the right hander, a guy that is a little bit surprising to still be a Padre. This was a, a reliever, Joaquin Benoit, that you figured would draw a lot of interest at the trade deadline. Instead, he's still here, and the numbers show why. A 1 6 4 ERA. He has earned the save in six of his last eight outings since they traded Houston Street, has not given up an earned run in that span. There was a lot of talk about him going to different ball clubs. And unlike you, I was surprised that he didn't go anywhere, especially with the Padres, you know, trading away certain players. I would figure this guy would have been on the tops of a lot of teams' lists, especially the teams in the playoff hunt. And David Peralta will lead off the ninth. He is our APS Energy All-Star. Another multi hit game for David a single and a run scored in the fifth he singled his last time up to lead off the seventh but uh, was left on base. Diamondbacks have stranded 10 in the game they trail at 7 4 here in the ninth. Five mile an hour fastball. Well, it seems like Peralta all day today he's been hit, got a couple hits today, both of them with two strikes, so he's he's battled today just to scratch out a couple hits, but nonetheless he continues to hit. And he's hit safely in eight of his last nine games. He's ahead, two balls and a strike. A 
Don't forget the great article by John Morosi that came out the other day on the scouting of David Peralta. You can read that at FoxSportsArizona.com. This is inside with a 95 mile an hour fastball. It's three and one. Diamondbacks need base runners here. Popped him up. The 3 1 pitch is hit to very shallow right field, and Salarte is there. One away. Tell you, I think David wish he'd get that pitch back. He missed out. He straight up to shoot there. You're sitting 3 1 and you get a pitch on the inner half. He just didn't get out in front of it. Mark Trumbo has singled and walked one for three. Another sky high pop up. Shallow left. Smith and Amarista. It's Amarista. One black one out away from his 600th win as a manager. All with the Padres. He trails only Bruce Bochy on San Diego's all time list. Bochy 951 games as the Padres skipper from 1995 through 2006. And Seems like he's won even more than that in San Francisco. Yeah, he really has. One of the best in the business right there, Bud Black. It's up to Miggy, a walk and a two run single. One for three. Padres will finish up this long road trip. It's back home to Pentco Park. Diamondbacks, a Hard earned day off at home tomorrow. Dodgers in for the first of two on Tuesday. And we'll have both those games for you on Fox Sports Arizona. Trevor Cahill and Roberto Hernandez Tuesday. Wade Miley and Clayton Kershaw Wednesday. Match up a left handers. And an off day on Thursday. Before the Rockies come in for three over the weekend. Benoit trying to go with an off speed pitcher. Get Miggy out in front. You got big off day plans? Draft preparation? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I'm sure it's a well deserved off day for you, too, just to get a little break. A long trip. Two off days at home in one week is just like winning the lottery. That two game series against the Dodgers are instead of a four game because of the two games played in Australia earlier this year. Yep. Yeah. That's the thing with interleague play. You got 15 teams in each league now, interleague every day. You get the two and the four game series. It's not always three in, three out. A lot of two gamers, a lot of four gamers. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. There's the strikeout and the Padres salvage the series finale. They win it 7-4. And they get number 600 for their skipper, Bud Black. Well, Gonzo, we talked about it's the little things. A uh, pass ball, some runners move up, a couple of productive outs for the Padres in that first inning. And then two big home runs, but three runs come in on those homers via the walk. Yeah, just uh, Chase Anderson had a couple bad innings here, the first and the fifth, and wasn't able to recuperate and put the uh, D-backs behind the eight ball early. Unfortunately, they weren't able to scratch out enough runs. Right, we'll have our...
our Diamondback Live post-game show coming up right after this break. That's it for now from Chase Field. We are back in two minutes. Diamondbacks drop the series finale 7-4, but they take the series two games to three. We'll wrap it all up from Chase Field after this.